Amen. Thank you, Judy. Hallelujah. I want you to look with me at God's Word this morning in Luke chapter 13. For several chapters, Jesus has been going about teaching and preaching and healing and doing miracles and do, telling parables and great and mighty things were happening. And he was working his way to Jerusalem as he was teaching and sharing. And someone asked Jesus in verse 23, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? And Jesus said to them, Make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Let's pray. Father, I ask for your anointing this morning. Lord, you laid this message on my heart several weeks ago. And Lord, as today, I feel this is the day. God, I need your touch. Lord, I need your anointing to preach what you've laid on my heart. God, I pray that you would prepare the hearts of these that are gathered here in this room to hear what you are speaking to us here at this church today. God, I pray that we will be open to what you would have done inside of each of our minds, our thoughts, and our emotions now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. This morning, I'm going to mess with some of you and your theology. And I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. I don't care what you've been taught or what you have heard before. I'm going to ask you just to listen to what the Word of God says. You know, we all come in here with thoughts in our minds, and we've heard other preachers say this, or we've heard... It said this way, and our training was this way, and that's the way I grew up. But how many of you know sometimes people take things and they interpret it the way they have been taught themselves? And they had received it from someone else, and the message may be somewhat twisted. So all I can ask you to do is don't listen to what I say, but read the word for yourself and let God speak to your heart, okay? There are some folks that have been led to believe that salvation is eternal. I believe that to be true. However, I know that once I give my heart to Christ that I'm saved. And that he is with me, he will never leave me, he will never forsake me. That's God's word. But I also know that there are times that we can walk out of God's blessings and away from him. And we can, what I call, backslide or fall away from God's word. And that's where I'm, that's where I'm headed this morning. The title of this message this morning is The Great falling away. The great falling away. There are a lot of people who are living a lie this morning who think that they're going to make it into heaven on an experience they had at an altar back many years ago, and yet once they gave their heart to Christ, they never truly repented and began to live for God and surrender their life to him. They continue to live in sin, thinking that they're going to make it on the grace of God. Are you hearing me this morning? And they're going to make it into heaven on a little prayer that they prayed. I'm going to share with you some scriptures this morning that will mess you up if you don't believe this. There are some churches that teach that once saved, always saved. That's good as long as you live for him and serve him. But when you choose to go your own way and you turn away from him and serve yourself, he no longer is Lord of your life. You'll either serve God 
through Christ or you will serve your flesh and your flesh will be surrendered over to Satan. Do you hear me? Okay, this is going to be a tough one, so hold on. So how do I know this? Well, in the last days, there will be a great falling away. The Bible tells us this. It'll happen before the judgment. In Matthew chapter 24, and you, you might want to write these verses down, okay, in case you don't keep up with me. I'll give them to you, but in Matthew chapter 24, in verses 12 and 13, it says, because of the increase of wickedness, has anybody seen any wickedness in our world today? Come on. I mean, just listen to what's going on around the world. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. That's rain if anybody's wanting to know. Okay? Okay, the love of most will grow cold. When I talk about the love, we're talking about the love for God. The love for God's righteousness. Because of the wickedness of this world, the love of most people will grow cold and they'll lose that desire to live for God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is God's word. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Now, if that message doesn't tell you something in the last part of that verse, it says that you have to stand firm till the end. It doesn't mean that you can stay in it. Come on. If you're not firm, if you're not standing up, if your love for God is not still there, if it's not with God, are you loving God more than you're loving the world? Or are you loving the world more than you love God? Come on. Think about it. First Timothy says it this way, and, and, and you say, Pastor, well, how do we know what you're saying is true? You're going to find there are several different authors in the New Testament that talk about backsliding, falling away. Come on. It's not just one person. It's not just one, but there are many who confirm that people think they're going to make it into heaven. Let me go back to that verse of Scripture I started with. Make every effort to enter in through the narrow door. How many of you know the door to heaven is narrow? It's not a broad pathway. It's narrow. You have to obey the rules, the guidelines, and follow his commands. Can I hear an amen? amen. Last night, we had gone to dinner, and we had, uh, boy, we just sinned. <laughs> Don and I have met up uh, with Danny and Alicia up in Folkston, or not in, in uh, Kingsland. We ate this little Italian restaurant, a little hole-in-the-wall place called Angelo's. It was really good. And afterwards, we decided we were going to just really blow it bad, and we went over to Cracker Barrel. You ever left one restaurant to go to another? <laughs> the, all it takes is just a little mention of something. So we went over to get this apple dumpling. Anybody ever had the apple dumpling at Cracker Barrel? Well, Don and I split one, and so did Dave, but, but it still was more than we needed. You know, and, and we were doing this. There was a waitress that came in. I don't know if she's here this morning. We invited her, but I, I haven't seen her. But uh, she came over, and, and she stood around our table and talked for a long time. And she said, well, you know, we're kind of, my husband and I they weren't going to church. They've been kind of turned off to church and different things. And she and, uh, said, you know, some of these churches you go to, it's like going to a rock concert anymore. And, and we just don't like that. And we're kind of old fogey. I mean, they're real young, <laughs> you know, real young lady, probably in their 20s. And, and uh, <clears throat> she, uh, she said, we're real traditionalist. And, and Danny said, well, you'll like our church. <laughs> And she began talking about how people were taking advantage of grace. And, and all of a sudden, my, my mind began to open up. Man, this woman has really got a thing for God, but she's just been hurt. And she really needs Jesus. You know, and not that she was away from Jesus, but she needs a church. She, you know, church, we need a people. We need a group to hang out with. Amen? We support each other. And, and we were just trying to encourage her. But when I think about this, this, this young lady, she says, there's a lot of people living a lie. I said, well, you need to come here to message tomorrow. Come on. So I wish you could have made it, but you're going to hear it. Listen, listen to this. He says, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but he who stands firm till the end will be saved. 
Church, we've got to be committed to this word all the way to the end. It doesn't waver. It doesn't change. There's no additions to this, no subtractions to this. This is the word of God, and it stands forever. Amen? Amen. And that has to be in our hearts and our lives until the day that he calls us home to be with him. First Timothy says, the Spirit says in verse 1 of chapter 4, First Timothy 4, 1, the Spirit clearly says that in the latter time, some will abandon the faith. Let me say it again. Some will abandon the faith. They will give up on their walk with Jesus. They'll quit. They'll give up. He says they will abandon the faith and they will follow deceiving spirits and things that are taught by demons. You know, there are some organizations and so-called churches today that are teaching some doctrines that are not based on God's word. If it's not the word of God, you don't need to hear it. You don't need to believe it. This is the truth. This is the word. This is the absolute truth that we need to stand on. Timothy, as we listen to Paul telling Timothy, the Spirit clearly says that in latter times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits. Again, Jesus, when he's talking about the end times in Matthew chapter 24, he says this in verses 10 and 11. He says, many will turn away from the faith. Let me say the scripture again for those who are taking notes. Matthew 24, verses 10 and 11 says, Many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. This is all going to happen before the day of judgment. This is all going to happen before the great day of the Lord. This is what's happening even today. There are people, I watch, and even in our own church at times, I see people following after their flesh. They're going after what their, their flesh desires and their passions desire, and their heart's not as in tune to God. They're not loving God like they need to love God. Are you hearing me this morning? God wants our heart. He wants our soul. He wants all of us. Can I hear an amen? Some people say, well, you're too spiritual minded. Well, I would rather be spiritual minded and make it into heaven, come on, than to miss out on heaven itself. Because the other place is hell and it's going to be terrible, weeping and gnashing of teeth. I don't want to wake up in hell finding out that I'm spiritual minded but I would rather be be where God had made a way for me through the cross through his son Jesus Christ amen another verse in Matthew 24 look down to verse 24 it says here for false Christ and false prophets will appear from and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect if it were possible. Let me tell you, there are going to be people that have been living for God a long time. If they're not careful, if they're not on their, on their uh, guard, they're going to find themselves being deceived by these whispering words of people. They're demonic spirits that are flowing through people. There, there are deceptions that come. Church, if it doesn't sound right, it probably isn't. If it sounds too good to be true, probably is. Anybody been there? Lillis and Skip, I know y'all got caught by a situation last year that was horrible. I got a phone call from somebody telling me, and this guy was from India. He says, I'm from Comcast, and I'm calling to offer you a special program on our, and if you'll just give me your credit card number. And I said, no way. I done heard. They went through it. Through Dish, what com- it was another company. There are people out there trying to deceive, not just with our finances, but trying to deceive you spiritually. Satan is doing his best to take as many to hell with him. He ain't happy. First, our Second Thessalonians, Paul tells the church in Thessalonica, in chapter two. Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 3 says, Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day, talking about the day of judgment, will not come unless the falling away comes first. I want you to understand, 
the falling away is going to take place. There are going to be multitudes that miss heaven. There are going to be a lot of people that thought they were going to make it that miss out because they were not living for God. They were living for self. I can't put it any plainer. And church, I want you to be aware of this. I don't want to be responsible for your soul being cast into eternal punishment. I'm preaching you the word. You are accountable for what you hear this morning. Amen? If you decide to go and play in the world and you die, it's on your head, not mine. I'm, dis I'm discharging the word that God gives to me, to you. You have to listen. You have to do what you need to do with it. You say, Pastor, is it possible that we could lose our salvation? I say yes. James said it this way in James chapter 5, James 5, verse 19 and 20. He said, my brothers, guess who he's talking to? His, the Christians, thank you, Earl. He's talking to the church. He says, my brothers, you here this morning, listen to what I'm saying. He's what he's saying here in James. If one of you should wander from the truth, it tells me James knows that it's possible that we can wander from the truth. It's very possible that you can stray away from God. If one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring him back, he says, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of his way will save him from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Church, we need to make sure we take care of ourselves first. Quit worrying about somebody else's problems and make sure you're in tune with God. Are you hearing me? And then if you're in tune and you're loving God and serving God and you see somebody else living a life that's not doing what they're supposed to be, if the Lord gives you the opportunity to help them, don't go over there and condemn them, but go and love them and say, look, God loves you, he cares for you, and I'm concerned about you, and I want you to know that I, I see where you're headed, and if you don't change directions, you're headed for a, a pathway that leads to destruction. Remember, narrow is the gate. Come on, but wide is the path that leads, broad is the path that leads to destruction. Get yourself in tune. Today that we may not have half as many people in church next week after I preach this message, but guess what? I did what I was supposed to do. You're exactly right, Earl. They need to hear it. Is it possible to lose your salvation? Jesus Christ, Revelations chapter 3. In Revelations chapter 3, Jesus Speaking to the church at Sardis. You hear me? Sardis. Jesus is speaking to the church at Sardis. And he says, wake up. Wake up. Strengthen what remains and is about to die. He says, for I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. He says, remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. You know, some people get saved. They get filled with the Holy Spirit. They really repent. They're living for God, and all of a sudden, the world creeps back in on them. They allow themselves to be exposed to things that God delivered them from. How many of you know when, when those temptations come back into your life, it's easy to fall and stumble and get caught back up into the old habits? If you're an alcoholic and you take one drink... You'll be caught back up if you're not careful. It just takes one time. You know, I will never forget, many years ago, we had a community uh, a Thanksgiving service, and, and, or maybe it was sunrise, I guess, and we had communion. And uh, the Episcopal priest that was ministering over here in town, he said, yeah, let's have communion. And he wanted to prepare it. Well, in their church, they offer real wine. You'll notice here we don't offer real wine. We give grape juice. There's a reason for that. First of all, all it takes is one sip out of that communion cup for an alcoholic to go back over the edge. Do you hear me? Would one sip out of a communion cup cause the average person to become an alcoholic? No. Most of you go, Phew. 
You know, if you, I don't care for it. I would never want it. But all it takes is one little bit. Are we going to be a stumbling block? No, church, we're not. We told the priest, we said, look, if you're going to join us, this is a good service, good thing we're doing, but we are not going to take a temptation on somebody and cause them to stumble and fall in this thing. And he was settled with that. He was fine. Okay, but I want you to know We've got to keep ourselves pure. We've got to keep ourselves holy. We've got to keep ourselves removed from the world as much as possible. We live in the world, but we're not a part of the world. Can I hear an amen? amen. He says, remember the deeds, therefore, what you have received and what you have heard. He says, obey and repent. He says, obey and repent. How many of you understand the word repentance? Repentance is not saying, oh, I'm sorry and go do it again. That's not repentance. Repentance is not saying, whoops, he caught me. Oh, nope, that's not repentance. Repentance means I'm doing an about face and I'm no longer going to live in that kind of a lifestyle. I'm going to go this way instead of that way. I'm going to walk completely the opposite direction from what the world was doing in my life. How many of you hear me? He said, but if you do not wake up, listen to this. If you don't wake up, if you don't strengthen yourself, if you don't repent, he says, I'll come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. How many of you know the thief tries to come when you're not looking? Tries to come in the middle of the night when you're asleep. He says, a thief will come when you not know it. In verse 4, he says, yet you have a few people here in the church or in Sardis, he says, who have not sold their clothes. They will walk with me and they'll be dressed in white and they, uh, for they are worthy. Verse 5 says, he who overcomes. How many of you know how do we overcome? By repentance. How do we overcome? We overcome by serving him, living for him, making him Lord of our lives. He says, he who overcomes will, like them, be dressed in white, and I will never blot their name from the book of life. Guess what happens if you don't overcome? Come on. Your name gets took out of the book of life. So how could that be? Because he's no longer Lord. You gave up. You quit. You're serving yourself instead of God. That would be a good place for an amen anyhow. He said, I'll never blot their name out of the book of life. But I will acknowledge his name before my father and the angels if he repents. Can I hear another amen? That's the one I want to hear. You say, well, that's only a few, Pastor. Well, let me tell you about old Mr. Peter who walked on the water. I may remember Peter got out of the boat. He was one of Jesus' favorite disciples, one of the inner three. He had spent a lot of time with him. He loved, matter of fact, he even tried to defend Jesus there in the garden, cut off a man's ear. Jesus had to put it back on and heal it. Here's what Peter said in 2 Peter chapter, chapter 2. Listen to this. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 20 and 21, 22. He says, if they have escaped the corruption of the world, talking about those who are now Christians, if they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and are again entangled in it and overcome, talking about falling back into the world. You were saved, now you've fallen back into the world. If you've been saved and you've gone back into the world, here's what Peter says. He says, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. You've been better not to have known than to have known and, and give up and quit. He says, it would have been better for them to have never known the way of righteousness than to have known it and to turn their backs. Listen to that. Turn their backs. Could you imagine? We don't think about when we, we fail God. We don't think about it when we, we do things that we want to do instead of what God really wanted us to do as turning our back on God, but that's exactly what it is. You've just said, no, Jesus, I won't. I'm not going to serve you. I'm going to serve my flesh. Maybe it ought to be old me. 
It would be as if turning our backs on the sacred command that was passed to them. He says, of them, the Proverbs are true. The dog returns to its vomit. And a sow that was washed goes back and wallows in the mud. That's what a backslidden sinner does. That's what somebody who falls away from the Lord and turns their back on God. They go back to their old habits, to their old ways. It's like somebody that's been delivered from, from a life of drugs and alcohol. They've been set free, and they're clean, and they're just feeling life all fresh and new. And all it takes is one time to go back. Are you hearing me? And the filth covers you all back one more time. The sin of this world, corruption. Well, what happens to those who fall away on judgment day? When God brings judgment, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? In just a moment, I'm going to let David play a little segment from this series we're doing on Sunday nights. Those who haven't been here, I challenge you. Make it your business to be here on Sunday nights. Quit doing your own thing and come and hear how God can help you to serve him and make it into eternity. You see, this whole series is driven by eternity. It's talking about living for eternity. I'm living for the kingdom of God. How about you? I'm not living for today. I'm not living for tomorrow. I'm not living for next week. You know, I plan for retirement. I plan for these things. But, but my real plan and my real future is in heaven with him forever and ever and ever. Not to be in hell forever and ever and ever. In this series, there's a fable, or not really a fable, but it's called an allegory. And it's a simulation of a relationship with Jesus Christ. He takes two chapters in this book that we're doing, and it's called Aphabel. Aphabel is the great city, and if you'll liken it to the great city of God, or of heaven, or of the new Jerusalem. Jesus Christ, in this allegory, was given a name and, and, and he's just he's made this up, so I'm giving you these names for importance. So when you hear this today, you'll know who they are. Jalen is like Jesus Christ. You'll hear another name called Surges. Surges is the teacher in the school, and he is like the Holy Spirit who teaches us. How many of you know the Holy Spirit there is always teaching us and training us? There's another individual by the name of Dagon. You figured that one out, Satan. And then there's this city called Indel, where everybody is trained. Where they're in their school, and they're being taught all of the laws of God, of Jalen. Just as we are on earth, and we're being taught God's word. And then there's another place called Lone. Lone is the same as hell, a place of eternal punishment. And one more term I'll give you. The name of an individual by the name of deceived. That says a lot in itself. But deceived is a man who is being judged for his life. When this audio starts, it's going to take just about six minutes, so please... Listen, listen. He's just been brought in before Jalen, who represents Christ. And as he's there, he's being judged. What happens is a big screen comes down. And it's all audio, so you'll just have to imagine. Close your eyes and listen. But a screen comes down, and it starts back from the very beginning of, of Deceive's life and takes him right up to the time right before he goes before his judgment. All the good that he did and all the bad that he's done. Play it, David. Back to our original scripture this morning in Luke chapter 13. Make every effort to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to.
There's going to be a lot of people surprised on Judgment Day. They thought they had everything under control. But they lived a lie. They thought grace would save them. Grace is only enacted when we're surrendered to God. Can I say that again? Grace only flows from God when we are surrendered and he is Lord. When he's not Lord, there is no grace. When there's not repentance, there is no grace. Matthew 7 says this in verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons and perform miracles? And then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doer. Revelation says this in chapter 20, in verse 15. If, any, if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. You say, well, Pastor, how do we make sure our name's in the book of life? Hold on. Let me give you one more verse. Revelation 21. Verse 27, the scripture declares, nothing impure will ever enter into heaven, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. What did Jesus tell the church at Sardis? Repent. Repent. How do you get your name in that book? How do you keep it from being blotted out? Make sure your heart's right with God. How can we stand firm until the end? We talked about that at the beginning. How do we stand firm until the very end? Times are tough. There's a lot of temptation. There's a lot going out there. Let me just tell you what Jude said. Matter of fact, Jude only wrote one chapter here. In Jude chapter, or chapter 1, Jude 17. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They told you that there would be mockers in the last times who would walk according to their own ungodly lust. Church, we're in those times right now. There are people who are mocking I saw something the other day, you may have seen it too, but uh, one of these wild outlandish rock singers said something about Tim Tebow. I don't know if you saw this, but was talking about, you know, if it was slamming the Jews or slamming some other organization, but, you know, people would rise up. But when you slam the Christians in the church, nobody says anything. They just go on with it. They let it ride. I'm here to tell you today that we are a people that need to stand up for what we believe in. Can I hear it? Amen. amen. They told you, and this is going on in chapter, or in Jude 17 through 23. They told you that there would be mockers in the last time and that you would walk, they would walk according to their own lust. These are sensual persons. They are sensual persons who cause division, not having the Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit. But you, now here's what we've got to listen to. But you, verse 20, beloved, talk about us Christians, build yourself up in your most holy faith. How do you build yourself up? Get in the word, come on. Spend time in prayer. Be in fellowship with the body of Christ. Continue to walk together and encourage one another. Can you hear me this morning? He says, build yourself up in the most holy faith and praying. Church, we try to provide times of prayer, special times of prayer beyond your normal prayer times. You know, I encourage you, 
Build yourself up. Pray in the Holy Spirit. And then he says in verse 21, keeping yourselves in the love of God. How do you stay in the love of God? Obey his word. Live for him. If you'll do it, you'll stay in tune with him the rest of your life. You can do it. If you'll stay in love, what was it Jesus said was the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, okay? The second commandment was love your neighbor as yourself. If you'll abide in those two, you'll never break the rest of the commandments. You'll be, you'll be good. You'll make it into heaven because you won't ever offend. You won't ever do something wrong. Come on, are you hearing me? Verse 22. Let me back up. 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus unto eternal life. Verse 22. And on some have compassion, making distinction. Folks, we need to reach out and win souls. Listen to verse 23. But others save with fear, being careful you're not pulled aside, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments that are defiled by the flesh. Church, we need to reach out and touch souls. I bring this message to a close today. If you're not right with God this morning, now is the time. We don't have the promise of tomorrow. A man that I've known very well for many years, I found out last night, was killed in an automobile accident down in Callahan on Friday afternoon. When I heard it, it hurt my heart. I just felt for his family. And I know that that morning when he awoken, he didn't know that that would be his last day. We don't have the promise of tomorrow. Judgment comes. Come on. And it's going to be your life put on the big screen. And everything's going to be taken into account. Where are you at? You see, today is a day of salvation. Judgment day is coming. Don't wait until it's too late. Don't wait until it's too late. I challenge you this morning to come to this altar in just a moment and repent of your sins. Start today. In that story, in that allegory, you heard deceived say, what about that wicked man in the back? How did he get in here? His name was Ruthless. Ruthless, only a week before he was brought to judgment gave his heart to Christ. He had lived as an evil person all his life, but he was saved the week before. He didn't have a great place in the kingdom, but at least he made it into the kingdom and he didn't spend eternity in eternal punishment. Church, I want to get inside the doors. And I want to live, I, I, you know, I'm not desiring to be in great ruler, but I, I just, I want to make sure I'm with heaven. I don't even want to take a ch I don't want to live so close to the edge of the world, you hear me, that I'm going to miss the opportunity of getting into heaven. I'm going to live so be best as I can so that I get to be with him and not even question of whether I'll make it or not. I don't want there to be a glimmer of question. I want to know for sure all the days of my life. My musicians will come. Don't take a chance on missing out on eternity. Will you stand to me all today? Stand with me. Let's bow our heads. Holy Spirit, today we walk out of here. This is not a message that made everybody feel happy. It made those who know Jesus happy. But Lord, I think there may be some here this morning. They've been playing church too long. They've been living a lie. And God, today may be the very last opportunity that they have to repent and to make you Lord of their life. God, I pray right now that they will take a step of faith 
and they'll move out of that seat and not worry about what anybody else thinks or anybody else says because nobody in here will ever judge them in heaven God it's you who judges the heart who judges the life God I pray this morning that there will be those who will repent this morning of their ways and God they will change I open the altar right now if it's you if God's speaking to your heart and he's saying now is the time for you to get right with me it's time to be serious with the things of God you've played around too long you've been on the fringes you thought you were in but the gate is narrow the way that leads to destruction is broad is wide I challenge you come don't wait, don't wait, don't wait another moment. You don't have the promise. Come on. This is the moment. This is the hour. This is the time. I don't want to go to a funeral of anybody in this house and say I'm not sure about their salvation. I want to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that they're with you in eternity, God. Do it this morning, Holy Spirit. Come on. Holy Spirit, touch the hearts of those who need to repent. God, those who need to come. God, that they would yield themselves to you. So as they stand before you on that judgment day, they won't hear. Bind him hand and foot. His name was not in the book of life. Bind him hand and foot and throw him into outer darkness. Lord, we want to hear those words that says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You may enter into my presence. Oh God, help us to put you first in everything we do in all of our lives. Spirit of God, have your Come on, there's several already here this morning. God's calling you. God, you're calling souls this morning to this altar. I'm not giving up yet because I know there are more that need to respond. There are some of you, you've been playing in the world. You've been playing in the world. You've been playing in things you know you shouldn't be dabbling in. And God's going to hold you accountable for them because you are not living for God. You're living to please yourself. You're doing your own thing. He's not Lord of your life any longer. You are. And God's saying, surrender. Surrender. Give it up this morning. Give it up this morning. Can I get a couple of folks to come and just pray over these folks that are here in this altar? Would you just come and lay hands on them, pray over them, just believe God?